Welcome to Sports Connection. I'm Darren Joins, Williamson County Schools Athletic Director, and I'm here with my virtual sidekick, Mr. Tate Matthews. Tate, welcome to the show. Good to see you, Coach Joins. Hey, we got a lot of big news this week and really nothing bigger than the retirement announcement of Barbara Campbell, Brentwood volleyball coach. We talk about her a lot. 33 years at Brentwood, top three all-time winningest volleyball coaches in the nation, not the state, the nation, a state best 1,765 victories, 85% win percentage. And Tate, I think the most impressive thing of all of these numbers to me is in her 33 years, they make the state tournament 28 years, 16 state titles, seven runners up, so that means only 10 of the 23 years uh, they were in at least the championship game. And, oh, by the way, eight straight championships. So, actually, I said the most impressive thing, and I whipped off about four. Big yeah. loss for the district, for sure, Tate. Well, and there's, there's another one, too. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Um, the other one, if you do 1765 divided by 33, 85% winning percentage, but uh, it, it, when you look at it per w wins per season, that's 53.5 wins per season. Wow. Uh, it's amazing. I, you know, we talked about it this weekend. I think, the, I think we use the word legend a little too loosely. Goat, greatest of all time, a little too loosely. Uh, I'm guilty of it, too. She is without a doubt. Um, you know, in football, you could – is it Coach Flat? Is it Coach Rankin? Is it George Quarles? Who is it? In volleyball, there's no debate. Barbara Campbell is the, well, they call her the queen for a reason. She is the GOAT of volleyball high school coaching in the state of Tennessee. Um, I, I, you know, I learned a long time ago, don't say records can't be broken because records will be broken. I don't know how this one's going to be broken. Right. Um, you know, that's going to be tough. <laughs> well, and she battled uh, – you know, much publicized, some health issues this year. Um, just, you know, the time's right. She said uh, it was sad. She didn't want to do it. She was already prepping uh, for this season. But I think it was going to be that way for her no matter when that happened. Um, you know, I guess there's really no perfect time uh, to leave. But winning eight straight seems like a pretty darn good time. And, and you know, I thought about this too, Tate. Let's put yourself in the – coaching chair here would you rather retire when the streak has been broken of eight straight somebody beats you eventually or would you just the last one was a win well, I've, I've never been in that seat you have I would think that I would want the last one to be a win uh, the thing is I don't know when that streak was going to break I don't 10 9 11 8 what is it you know so um, yeah, when she definitely went out on top, uh, she definitely left the program better than she found it because it wasn't a 16 time state champion program when she found it. And, uh, you know, uh, you, you talk to any of the coaches that played against their teams, they always competed. Um, I, you know, she wasn't a big yeller or screamer, but you know, effort, uh, you never, you never saw, there was never a problem with effort. There was never a problem with competing. She just ran it the right way, man. And so to answer your question, I don't know when the right time was. Obviously, the right time was now because I don't think that streak was going to end anytime soon. But uh, going out with eight straight, not many people can say that. Well, no one in this state can, can say it. Uh, you, you know, again, uh, we could go on and on and on and on about Coach Campbell. But uh, when you're talking legendary status, which you mentioned, uh, you've got to start with someone like her. So congratulations on a great career uh, for Coach Campbell. We wish her well. And really, uh, we probably need to wish the best of luck to these three people, Kevin Kydell, Joe Blair, and the person that replaces Coach Campbell. <laughs> yeah. And Darren Joins, the yeah. county athletic director. This is yeah. a pretty big spot to fill. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty big. It is. Yeah, I'm going to lay it on them, though. I mean, you know, they're at the school <laughs> you know how does that work like this is still a great job right it's the premier job I would think in in the state in high school volleyball they always say don't follow 
Um, don't follow a legend, be the person that follows a legend, right? But I, this program's not broke, you know? So if you're a good coach, I mean, you know, um, how would you feel about that? You know, I mean, if you're confident in your ability as a coach, I think I'm one of the best coaches in the state. This is the best program in the state. The cupboard is not bare. Why wouldn't you want that challenge? Yeah, I mean, if you're a person who is big time yourself, I mean, you're not going to shy away from doing that. Uh, I, I don't think that'll be an issue. Now, if it's a up and comer, uh, maybe a little bit different situation uh, because there's always going to be the, when Barbara Campbell was here, you know, this, the, the, the new coach will have to uh, definitely establish his or her own identity. But uh, again, great career from coach Campbell. No doubt about it. And she'll be around, man. It's, um, uh, you know, it's sad. It's bittersweet. Uh, but um, again, I guess the best thing to say is job well done. Job well done. Well said, Tate. Let's talk bowling. Congratulations to the Franklin girls and Centennial boys for winning the region championships. Uh, they defeated Franklin girls defeat Brentwood. Centennial boys defeat Franklin. All four teams advance to the sectionals. Uh, Brentwood girls lose to, uh, to White House. Franklin boys lose to Lebanon. But the boys team from Centennial advances to the state with a win over Cumberland County, 20.5 to 5.5 or 5.5 to 20.5. Franklin 22-5 on the girls' side over White County. So pretty big time, Tate. This is the first time I had to uh, I talk to Dr. Qualls about this and some others. Uh, we've had state tournament participants. I, uh, Dr. Qualls mentioned Summit early on, but certainly the first time we've had two teams, boys' team and girls' team in the state. And this is a sport where we continue to, to improve. You talk about guys like Ted Logan, uh, the Franklin boys and girls coach. He's so into it. Uh, really wants to do it the right way. He's really pushed. Uh, let's let's get middle school bowling going here in WCS, which we're we're pushing to do here in the near future. So it's it's really exciting. And like we've always talked about, and I know you appreciate this too. Uh, it's not as high profile as football or basketball, and the reporters aren't naturally there. Means the same thing to these to these kids who are involved uh, in bowling to make the state tournament. Not a doubt. It's every bit as important to them as any other sport is to that particular athlete. And uh, you're right. You can tell the growth of it uh, in, in, in popularity and participation in, in, the, in the county. And, and so like everything else we do, the, 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 more, um, the more important it becomes here and, and, and the more participation we have, guess what? We start winning. So I love the matchups, uh, Centennial versus Cumberland County. You'd never see that in football. You'd never see it in basketball. It's a pretty cool matchup, man. Do you the know Jets. the Do you know the Cumberland the County mascots? The Jets. I knew you were going to ask. The Jets. School colors. I do not know that. I think it's uh, hopefully, hopefully we don't do that here. Baby blue and yellow. Baby blue and yellow. Yeah, let's let's don't do that. <laughs> now, some people would say Brentwood is baby blue and yellow. We disagree. They have more powerful names than that you know the official names of those colors right i do and they are well it, back in the day it was it was it was uh, baby blue royal blue and gold and then vegas gold took over and now there's there's some athletic gold there's some vegas gold there's some yellow there's not a whole lot of baby blue though vegas gold that sounds much more intimidating than yellow no doubt about it or as Dr. Vaden likes to call it, khaki. <laughs> Franklin in that sectional substate, you and I like to call it the substate, Leah Miller uh, with a high of 209. Yeah, I, did, I said that correctly, Tate, 209. Yeah. She, Riley Garrison, and Maddie Yates won all three of their games. Centennial, Frankie Negron, Sam Dodson, Trevor Flack, all three and O. Oh. And then Wyatt Stagall, a game high or a high game, excuse me, 255. That's not very many open frames. <laughs> no, I couldn't do it with bumpers. <laughs> I've seen you bowl. <laughs> yes, you yeah, that's 255 strong. Day. Very that's strong. A, that's a story for another day, our, our bowling. Uh, Correct. Expertise. Well, I don't know, <laughs> I wouldn't call it expertise, our, uh, our bowling abilities. 
So Correct. congratulations to both of those squads. And we uh, have some bowlers too that qualified as individuals. We'll uh, recap it all next week, but good luck to Centennial on the boys' side, Franklin on the girls' side. In wrestling, a couple of big tournaments this past weekend, the Franklin tournament, um, uh, excuse me, we'll start with Brentwood. Uh, Wilson Central uh, comes in two straight weeks, winning a tournament here. Uh, Blackman finishes second. And then here's what stood out to me. The top finishing team in WCS, Fairview, they finished 29 points ahead of fourth place Beach, which you know that's a good program. Brentwood seventh, Centennial eighth. Individual champions, Ken Curtis, Jacob Clevenger, both of Fairview. Again, it stands out to me every week when we talk about wrestling, we keep talking about Fairview. And we don't talk about Fairview as, oh, look what they're doing in the small class. We're talking Fairview as in comparison with all the other teams on an equal playing field. Yeah. Uh, well, you said it at the beginning, you think this is going to be the year they break through and win the state championship. And, and these tournaments are, are, are showing that um, you might be right on the money. But, yeah, I, I think they could make the AAA state dual tournament uh, if they were AAA. So, uh, yeah, I think they got a really good chance to do it. But these tournaments and – it's, and it's not by – it's by design, right? He's putting them in these tournaments, wrestling these kind of guys to make them better. I love it, you know. We don't have to worry about that in wrestling. Sometimes we see that in football or basketball, you know. Do you want to what, – what's your goal? Do you want to be undefeated or, or in the regular season or do you want to win a state championship, right? He's getting these guys ready. And so two back-to-back -to -back tough tournaments. Um, uh, I would think that Wilson Central and Cleveland, that's pretty scary. You, you know you're going to have to go through those two in AAA. Great thing is Fairview doesn't have to see them in the state duel. So I think you're right. Um, uh, I think they're, they might be the best team in, in, in Williamson County in, in wrestling. And we've talked about it from the beginning. The, the cool thing about it is the way he's done it. There was, there was the team was on life support. Uh, the first thing he had to do was get out there and get numbers. Uh, I think that sometimes get lost, lost in wrestling. You know, you got to have people to practice with. You can't just go out and shoot like shoot basketball by yourself, right on the gun. He got, he had to get numbers out. He did that. Um, you know, there's a lot of athletes in that school that football players that weren't wrestling. He's made that, um, you know, attractive to them and got those dual sport guys out there. And if you look at the Clevengers, I mean, golly, <laughs> I hope there's another one. They just keep, they just keep getting Clevengers up there and they keep winning championships. So, uh, the way he's done it, he built it the right way. Uh, it's a program. It's not a team. And, uh, I know you're very high on Coach Derek. I don't think you can say enough great things about what they've done. This is this is fun to watch. I think you're right. Double A, double A, the Yellow Jackets are coming to take home a title. The Franklin tournament, Cleveland uh, comes in and wins that tournament. They had finished second behind Wilson Central uh, in the tournament last weekend. Summit finishes second. There's another team. You see them in the state rankings, Coach Miller and Summit. Nolensville finishes third, again, an A, double A team. Ravenwood fifth, Franklin sixth, Independent seven. Individual champions uh, in uh, their respective weight classes, Drew Dotson from Ravenwood, Tanner Willett from Independence, Luke Justice and Ryan Smith, both of Summit uh, with individual championships. On the girls' side, uh, Navy and Brinson from Summit, Annalise Dotson, Isabella Campbell, both from Franklin, and Kaylin Thomas from Ravenwood. So congratulations to those individuals and those teams. Now, Tate, let's transition into basketball. Uh, the girls' standings, as of the taping of the show, Summit still undefeated at 5-0, Brentwood 5-1, Spring Hill undefeated at 4-0, Page 4-1, Ravenwood 3-3. Three three. Both of those teams were out uh, this past week, along with Centennial. They were out. Dixon 3-3, three three, Franklin 2-6, Indy 0-8. Oh so it's shaping up a little bit. Uh, I think that wild card, and they're not a, a WCS team, but I think it's worth mentioning, is Spring Hill, and they defeated Brentwood. That's Brentwood's only district loss. So you got to give it to the Lady Raiders there at Spring Hill playing well so far. No doubt about it. I don't think anybody saw that one coming. Uh, I, I think it'll be a different story the next time they see Brentwood, but still, it's a win nonetheless. Nobody, there, there were times when uh, they went over in in district play every year, so – yeah, that throws a that throws a monkey wrench in it, right? Because you already had four really good teams. Um, the Lady Spartans are still undefeated. That's that's um, 
you know, we're getting later on in it. So that, that, that's uh, pretty impressive. Uh, they probably have the best inside out game. Right. And then uh, the lady Bruins, when, when I know you're going to talk about them a second, but when that one, two combo gets hot now, that's kind of like, uh, that's kind of like what Steph and clay uh, when they're both hot, you're, you're in trouble. So I can't wait for the next Brentwood high spring Hill game. I think it's going to be a little bit different. Speaking of Brentwood, 77, 29 winners over independence. Uh, Sydney Ryan, 32 points, 10 rebounds in that contest. Amelia Osgood, 17 points, eight assists, four steals. They also, Brentwood, got a win over Loretta uh, at Lebanon this past week, a showcase there with very, very good uh, showcase, 67-57 on, again, Saturday at Lebanon. The game of the week in terms of the score, I had to do a double take when I saw this. Franklin 82, Dixon County 88. Franklin led by Kate O'Neill, 42 points on 17 to 25 shooting with eight rebounds. Gene Costello, 16.7 assists, four rebounds. Uh, but Kate was actually outdone on the scoring side of it. Anna Claire Milam, 43 points, including 20 in the fourth quarter. Tough loss for Franklin, but what a game. 82, 88. That's a man. That's a shootout right there. That had to be a great game to be a part of. Hate to see Franklin come up on the short end of that, but you know they just keep getting better. And Kate O'Neill, forty-two points, uh, seventeen of twenty-five shooting. That's pretty strong. You know you're going to win a lot. Most of the time, you're going to win a lot of games like that. I I, I think that by uh, probably tomorrow, if not uh, by the end of the week, Kate will join the thousand-point club as well. So. Um, she's really, really playing well. The wins don't reflect it as much for the Lady Admirals, but I think it's fair to say Kate's playing as well as anybody, anybody in the district. And then Franklin follows that up, uh, losing to a very good Spring Hill team, 58-50 at Spring Hill on Friday. Kate backs up that 42-point performance with a 28.11 rebounds per performance. So, like you said, uh, no moral victories, but the Lady Admirals are certainly playing better. They're going to be dangerous come tournament time. Speaking of dangerous, Summit 66, Dixon County 44, Delaney No 18, Claudette Runk with 10. They, too, participated in the Lebanon Showcase this past weekend. Uh, they dropped their, their game 40-33 to 33 over a very good Westmoreland team. Delaney No uh, again, led the team in scoring with 17, but Coach Wild, and the Spartans playing really well. They've got some tough games coming up. Uh, of the teams that have had some games canceled, two games that they still have to make up. So they have four games left with Spring Hill and Brentwood. And those are obviously two teams uh, that don't have a loss unless it's to one another, Spring Hill defeating Brentwood. So uh, right. those games are going to be tough for Coach Wild and the Spartans. He's up for the challenge. <laughs> and he'll probably uh, – I'm assuming on the, well, on the way to Spring Hill, at least, he'll probably uh, find somewhere to eat, maybe on the way or maybe the way back. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. There'll probably be some kind of meal that we'll all hear about as well. Yes. Yes. Definitely a meeting three. I don't know. He, he, he seems like Sarge's shack. He might take a little detour down 65 South, get the, get the fillets on a better rice. He's, he's, he's pretty partial to that place. He definitely is. Hey, let's talk boys standings. Franklin seven and one atop the league in first place. Got a big week coming up. We'll talk about here in a second. Uh, Ravenwood six and two independence now five and three after a big win over Brentwood Brentwood sitting at four and two look out summits won three straight in the league. They're now three and three page three and four centennial two and five. And uh, I've got, you know, I'm, I'm big on making these uh, profound statements and predictions I predict that Dixon County and Spring Hill will play in the 8-9 game on the boys' side. I'd say that's a pretty good prediction. <laughs> <laughs> now, who they're going to play, still not sure. Hey, boys' recaps. Let's start with the WCTV game of the week. It was the first game of the week. Uh, our previous was canceled, and it's so 2020-21 now that the girls' game was canceled, so it was only one game. Centennial 42, Ravenwood 65. This was one that surprised me a little bit in terms of the margin. Centennial had really been playing well. They lost to five by five points at home to Franklin. They lose at Brentwood on Tuesday night by six. And this was a domination from the get-go, actually. 
Ravenwood jumps out 11 to two early. They're up 34, 17 at the half and they never look back. Yeah. And, and the thing that jumped out to me, you mentioned how close Centennial's games were and, and we know it's by design. Coach Moore is trying to keep that score down. Uh, you know, he, he, he thinks that's the, gives them the best chance to win. And so, uh, they holding some really – Franklin was one of them, holding some really good teams to low scoring. And when I saw that Ravenwood 65 points, that kind of jumped out to me. And uh, Coach Whitlock said about as well as they played offensively, shot well, uh, had everybody really contributed. So, you know, we've talked about it. I like this Ravenwood team. I think it's one of the best teams they've had in a while, Coach Whitlock's had in a while. And um, when, they, when they play like they did the other night, they're going to put up a lot of points. So, yeah. Um, I think that's a really, even though Centennial is not at the top of the district and wins, I thought that was a really good win, especially the way they won. Ravenwood, the other thing that was scary about Ravenwood uh, on this particular night because of foul trouble and then Connor English has been a little bit banged up, but Noah Clifford and Connor English really weren't factors in this right. game. You think about them playing, then uh, they're really scary. Jake Mulder. Uh, led the team with 14, 11 players scored. Centennial had the same thing, 11 players scored. The bad news is their top scorer only had six. That's Trey Barbary. And Patrick Garrett held to only five points. Again, great defensive effort. And speaking of the WCTV game of the week, again, that was the game of the week, let's take a look at the WCTV play of the week. Did you watch the tape? I did. Lee Millette with the spin move. All right, go ahead. Lee Millette, dual sport athlete, got there showing his athleticism, got the spin move looking like Russ Westbrook for the layup. I like it. I'm telling you, don't sleep on the Raptors now. They're athletic. They're big. Got some guards. I think, they, I think they're a matchup problem. Can defend a little bit. So uh, I like P. Witty's Raptors this year. Yeah, me too. Brentwood, 64 at Independence, 68. Probably the best game of the week uh, in 11 AAA. Independence, uh, they've played well the last couple of years against Brentwood, obviously getting the win the other night. But last year, uh, as an eight seed, took Brentwood all the way to the wire, and they had done that too the previous week, uh, uh, the final regular season game. So that, that's the game that, for whatever reason, Independence usually comes in and plays well. Now, don't get me wrong, the talent's closer this year. Uh, Independence led 30 to 23 at the half. Brentwood up 43 41 entering the fourth. And then it's just a scoring festival in the fourth quarter. Independence scores 27 points, led by a freshman, Jet Montgomery, with 22 points. He was nine of nine from the free throw line. And my thought was this because uh, I haven't talked to uh, either coach about the game. Did, was Jet nine for nine because Independence wanted to get him the ball? Or was he nine for nine because Brentwood said, let's foul the freshman? Either way, <laughs> he hits all nine free throws uh, and really was a big factor in that game. Yeah. What a great story. I, I, I've been watching Jet play for the last three years. My guess is Coach Kyle wanted to get him the ball because if you've seen him shoot, he can shoot. Uh, and, and knowing the, the work that, uh, that um, Coach Shirley puts in, he had to have known. So, my guess, I hope it wasn't because they wanted to get it to the freshman. Because if not, they didn't know that freshman very well. He can flat shoot it. And uh, what, a what a great performance. Uh, Coach Montgomery's son, uh, I mean, he, he can, you know, we got some really good freshmen in this, in, in this district right now, starting with Jet, uh, Daniel Cochran at Brentwood. I know he had a double-double against Loretto uh, over the weekend. And Davis Long at Franklin, Gaynor at, uh, at, at, at Evan at Raymond. We got some really good freshmen. So. But Jet, I mean, I don't care how good you are. You come in and go nine for nine like that in the fourth quarter in a game like that, uh, that's tough right there. And um, you're right, man. For some reason, independence, I, I, I believe in this. I, I, I don't know how much you do. I, I believe there's matchups, bad matchups. And, and for whatever reason, independence is a matchup problem for Brentwood I. I and, hey, if you think they don't watch, my boy Winley, last week I talked about how he's consistent he's always around 16 never a scoring outburst he goes out and scores 31 <laughs> <laughs> I bet he I bet he did have have a little tape me at Matthews in the back of his mind Griffin Burke Mr. Consistency also for Brentwood 
uh, really a leader for that team, uh, scores 14 points. Now, Franklin, I thought this was interesting. Franklin, Independence, and Ravenwood are atop the standings right now, and they're the only three teams who have no games to make up in terms of district games. I thought that was an interesting thing. So that really bodes well for those teams. You start playing three and four games a week, like some of these other folks are going to have to do the next couple of weeks, it's going to make it even harder chasing those top three teams. Without a doubt. Yeah. I mean, at some point you, you, you start to worry about legs as the coach, don't you? I mean, um, <laughs> you know, that, that's, that's a lot of ball to play and, and they all matter. Well, and you probably at some point, uh, I think everybody as the season progresses, you're going to let up a little bit in practice, but in particular uh, during this time. But what makes that tough is I think coaches are practicing a little longer because they didn't have the summer and much of a preseason uh, like they normally have. So uh, it makes it kind of tough and some tough decisions have to be made uh, in that respect. Frankly, a couple of games, this is a tale of two weeks. This past week, they played the eight, nine teams. They dominate Dixon County, 76-41. Uh, then they dominate Spring Hill, 69-37. A couple of dominating wins for Franklin. They're really on a what roll. 10 straight wins, 14 and two on the season. This week is a different story in terms of matchups at Brentwood Tuesday night, and then the My TV 30 game Friday night uh, versus Ravenwood. So this is a big week for Franklin. Not that they have to win them both. Uh, if they do win them both, that's obviously great. If they split, that's okay. If they lose both, it's not panic mode time, but we'll know a, a lot more about the standings when we're talking next week. Yeah, no doubt about it. They can make a real statement this week and uh, 10 straight, 14 and two on the season and a crazy season. So um, I would think if they win both of these, that pretty much puts it to bed. They're going to finish the season number one in, in the district, right? Which would be heck of an accomplishment. And so um, both those games are going to be fun to watch. Uh, you know, you know the deal, right? Uh, they got they got two guys that can Stockton and Malonia, right? They can put up uh, 30 a piece, 30 both of them, and and the rest of the, the rest of the pieces on that team uh, really, really playing well. Uh, I, I, you know, if, if Franklin shoots well, I don't know how you beat him. It's tough. They, they have, uh, in my opinion, the best starting five, and that five plays quite a bit of minutes. Um, they're tough. They're, they're really, really tough and really playing well, and all those pieces seem to be fitting together even better as time goes by. Hey, let's face it, they've had the same starting lineup for two years. That's right. And I know Coach Tiger was looking forward to uh, how this team would look as the year progressed. And, man, are they looking good. It's going to be a fun game, both of them. Can't wait. I'm sure you'll be in attendance in at least one of those. At least one for sure. <laughs> Summit 50, page 45. Uh, Summit holds off a furious fourth quarter rally. Page was down 36-24. They tie it 41 all. And then what does Caleb Jolly do? He steps up and hit four, four for four free throws in the last 25 seconds. Destin Wade led the calls with 20. Uh, Wirtz with 12. Page, three players in double figures. Jamie Hernandez, 13. Thomas Seaman, 10. Ethan Overstreet, 10. I thought this was a heck of a stat. Summit, 14 for 20 from the free throw line. Page, 18 for 22. Free shots, as my mother calls them. You got to hit those free shots. Free shots. And, uh, you know, uh, you hate to see that for, for, for Paige, Coach Howard's team. You know, I would think that normally you go 18 for 22, you got to feel pretty good about your chances to win. So um, I know uh, tough loss, tough pill to swallow, but a lot of positives coming out of that. And, and Hernandez, Seaman, Overstreet, you know, they, they always they, – they've got, they've got a group that can score. Uh, Paige is not anybody I'd want to see in the district tournament. You know, they, even when they don't win, they're always in these games. And um, I think they're going to make noise come district tournament time. Summit, you mentioned they keep getting better. Um, kind of the same deal as Centennial. I think if if that game stays under 60, Summit feels good about it, right? If, if the games get over 60, that's where probably not uh, in Summit's wheelhouse. Let's talk double A. Uh, maybe the story of WCS right now is the continued great play of, of Fairview's girls. They're five and one in the district. This past week, they get three-point win over Creekwood, a two-point win over East Hickman, 
and Tate, this week's gym, you're going to be impressed. Creekwood, their first loss in the district since a 26-24 loss in the district finals, February 18th, 2019. First regular season loss since a 33-22 loss back in 2017. Both of those losses came to Stewart County. A program-defining win for Coach McGowan in Fairview. No doubt about it. You're right. They, they have been... Creekwood has been long the, the, the queen's king of that district, and uh, that is a huge win, man. And you're right. It is the story of the year right now. Um, they continue to play well, um, and, you know, and, 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 and sitting atop the district. I don't know, how, you know, whoever saw that coming, good for them, because that was uh, – it hadn't been the case. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a heck of a story, and they continue to play well, and I can't wait to see what they do in the district tournament. You're right. Any – a win over Creekwood, that was big. That's never, you know, those girls had never seen that. That's awesome. Kelsey Gossage with 20 points, eight rebounds against Creekwood and 21 points, five rebounds, three steals, two blocks against East Hickman, Riley Dillingham, Casey Mullins, Chloe Lee, also with big games during that big last week. Fairview's ball. Five and one in district play. They lost to first place Creekwood. 62-58, but they bounced back with the 70-45 win over East Hickman. Kennedy Pendergrass with a couple of big games, 16 points, nine rebounds, five assists, two steals against Creekwood. He turns around and gets 13 points, six rebounds, two assists. And then Shama Takup, 14 yeah. rebounds against East Hickman. What a game. I'm telling you, Fairview, they're going to be in with a shot for, the fifth, for their fifth straight district tournament title here in a, a couple of weeks. Yep, that'd be great. Pendergrass, well, he's got to be up for player of the year, right? And then 14 Likewise. rebounds. That's like Ben Wallace, Rodman type stuff, right? And I, and I, when I was mentioning the freshman, Maze McCoy, he's another one um, uh, that we got really, really good. So, yeah, I, I think uh, I think Fairview, what'd you say? It'd be their fifth? Be fifth in a row if they could win the tournament this year. And before that, you had to go back to the 1960s to find a district tournament winner. I think they do it. I think they definitely have a shot. It'd be nice to see both teams in with the shot to win that district championship. Let's talk Nolensville now. Uh, one and one boys and girls this past week. Uh, the girls with the 64-49 went over Giles. Then they lost to Murfreesboro Central Magnet, 48-46. On the boys' side, 71-64 went over Giles. Another loss to Murfreesboro Central Magnet, 58-55. Chloe Earls, Sarah Grubasik. Uh, Zoe Pillar came in lad, all playing well for Nolensville, had big games on the boys' side. Uh, Ashley Smith, Davin Watkins, Riley Byron uh, were the leaders. And something else I liked, and the girls weren't able to play because Paige didn't play uh, this past week, but Nolensville's boys took on Paige on Saturday night. Nolensville uh, comes up on the short end of that one, 58 to 43. But I love to see of the WCS games being played. Yeah, no doubt about it. And that that uh, that Central Magnet, Nolansville, especially on the boys' side rivalry, that's been a great game the past few years. And it just seems to keep going back and forth. So, um, you know, uh, that, 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 that one's uh, – that one is a, is a good gauge for, for come postseason. You know, they'll see each other again. And then with, with the um, – the Nolansville, that, I didn't know Central Magnus girls were that good. That's a big win beating them. So, um, you know, they're going to be fine. They, they've been there, done that. They know, they know what they got to do. And, and like I said, when, when you got Zoe Pillar on the court, you're going to be – you're going uh, uh, the odds are usually in your favor. Another team, both those teams will be trending in the right di direction come, come tournament time. Tate, appreciate you being here this week. We got Independence Page as the WCTV game of the week. I'm looking forward to that one uh, in particular on the boys side. Uh, that'll, that'll also say a lot about how the standings are going to play out. If Paige has hope of getting in that top four, they need to win that game. Independence, to me, they cement themselves in the top four with a win. Be fun to watch. It'll be a good game for sure. Tate, as always, appreciate you being here and we'll see you next time. I can't wait to, to talk more hoops 
uh, to talk more bowling, to talk more wrestling. We're getting right in the thick of things. Going to be fun. Thank you for joining us for Sports Connection. We'll see you next time.